All right, everyone, welcome back to our reading of categories and sheaves. We're picking up right where we left off in the last video. We just finished 2.6. Now we're going to be talking about 2.7. 2.7 is about the Yonida extension of functors. And after a long time in the making, um, this is a really nice section because it really ties together everything we've done in this chapter. Um, maybe we're coming at a bit of a snail's pace, but uh, you know, it, it, nothing in life worth doing is free. And, and, and we've worked hard at this uh, to get this far. So we deserve to get some nice results and, and maybe even a couple low hanging fruits once in a while. So what we're gonna do in this section is consider um, some non-toy cases of con extensions. In the chapter on con extensions, which feels like it was an eternity ago at this point, um, I don't know about you guys, but I had never seen those notions really before, so I was very much confused. Um, and when you try to look online, it's very difficult to find examples that are not particularly highbrow, and now we're sort of in a place to understand a few more of those higher brow examples. Um, and so what we're going to do is look at the case where the functor that we wanted to uh, do the con extension to is the Onita functor. Um, this sort of thing is, is sort of ripe for set theory problems, but we just, I don't care about any of that. I want to stop talking about set theory. Um, so what we're going to do um, is basically use the theory of con extensions and of limits, especially the sheafy limits from the last section that we just introduced to characterize those functors which come from the Onita embedding. So, uh, let's just get right to work. We have a proposition. Um, let f from c to a be a functor. Uh, c small. And we assume that a has uh, small inductive limits. then there is such a con extension. And remember that con extensions have this weird notation where Kashiwara and Shapira use the lower star and then the daggers are upper and we swapped that to make sense and be you know, not cursed. Um, the pullback goes with the upper star. And so its adjoints are lower daggers, both dagger and double dagger. Um, and we'll be looking at the, uh, the uh, should be sure, um, the left con extension. Um, let me just double check really quick before I say something I regret. Um, about 99% sure that the, the lower dagger is the left con extension. Yeah, that's the, the or it's the left adjoint, which is the left con extension. Um, so then we'll be talking about um, the functor H dagger F. And in order to uh, avoid overloading the notation, as much as possible. Um, I'm going to try to suppress as many bells and whistles as I can. Like I know we would often write HC for the Yonita functor so that we know, uh, of course, what functor, what category is being embedded. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to keep adding more and more stuff to these. So until I run into a problem, um, H dagger will be completely fine. Um, so then the claim is that H dagger, I don't know why I put a period there, H dagger of F exists and it also commutes with small inductive limits. I need to make an abbreviation. Maybe I'll call them SILs, SPLs, um, or SLs and SCLs co-limits. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, and finally, satisfies uh, H dagger F composed with H. It's isomorphic to F. And you got to remember that H dagger F doesn't mean like H dagger following F, right? H dagger is something that you apply, right? It's a functor that you obtain by doing this, solving this universal problem, so to speak, of extending a functor using con extensions. Now there's a converse to this proposition, which is that if I have a functor, which I'll call F tilde, C hat to A, um, satisfies a, a similar formula, namely F tilde composed with H is isomorphic to F and commutes with small inductive limits uh, with values in C. So they have to be correctly valued. 
um, then F tilde is actually isomorphic as functors to H dagger of F. So uh, let's just begin before we get right into the proof. Let's just elaborate on this last condition just a little bit. Um, if uh, if F tilde commutes with those uh, special uh, inductive limits, I don't know like how to abbreviate this. SILs. I'm just going to write it out again. Values in C. Um, then what that means is that if we have a functor alpha i to c, then normally uh, what we do is just construct the limit over alpha, and that's our sheafy limit because this is a functor. So we would obtain lim alpha. Um, the statement that f tilde commutes with such limits means um, so this is equivalent to um, f tilde of the sheafy limit. Is the same thing as the ordinary limit of f composed with alpha. And so what this proposition is trying to tell us is that while the Yonita embedding does not commute with inductive limits, this con extension does. And in fact, where we're going with this is that this is going to be the characterization that I sort of said at the end of the last video. Um, we're going to characterize functors with this property and in that way sort of really get at the heart of what the Yonita embedding is doing. Okay, so now let's let's do this proof. Um, the first direction is very straightforward. Um, we set f tilde to just be this functor. Um, this will just be our h dagger f. And in section three, we learn how to compute uh, such functors. Um, in particular, we learned a formula which says that to evaluate f tilde of a, what I do is take the limit over all the f of u's where um, I'm looking at maps u to a. And I'm going to suppress that limit because I don't want to write it over and over again, just like last time. Um, the important thing is that the Yonita functor, being fully faithful, preserves the shape of this diagram. In fact, more or less just keeps this diagram intact. And so the exact same theorem in 2.3, I want to say it's like 2.3.3 or something like that, or 2.3.4, um, says that F tilde composed with H, well, this is just by definition H dagger of F composed with H, um, and this in turn is h upper star h lower dagger of f is isomorphic to f. And this is because that theorem told us that this composition is naturally isomorphic to the identity. And this was, I don't remember if it's the unit or the co-unit, I can't remember now, but it was the point about this business of adjunctions and uh, these, um, uh, I can't remember what the name is now. They're like zigzag inequalities. What the heck am I saying? They're like zigzag identities, um, and I can't remember what their name was in Kashiwara and Shapira. It's like 2.3.3 plus that result from 1.5. Okay, now we'll do the reverse implication, and this one involves another sheaf Hom calculation. Um, and so what you should do is recall um, that we said last time that Hom or, um, did we say this? I, if, if I didn't say it, then it certainly should be in Kashiwara and Shapira. But let me write on the formula I need and not stress about it. Hum FM. This is the same as hum in A of F of U M. I think we established this during the calculation. Um, and using this formula, then we're going to calculate. What we see um, is that in our case, we have Right. For us, we have hum c hat what am I saying? I want hum c hat of the limit u into our sheafy hum fm and this is the same thing as the limit the projective limit, because we're in the contravariant argument, c hat, u, and I got to scooch over a little bit, hum, fm, and this in turn is the same thing as the limit of the hums now in a of f of u, using 
what we saw about sheaf hum, which in turn, now we bring the limit back inside and we use the usual limit because now we're in A. And this is, of course, our exact definition of F tilde of A because all of these limits are over such Qs. Okay, so what this shows is essentially that um, F tilde is adjoint to sheaf hum. And that sort of bodes well for where we're going, right? Because, um, well, I mean, F tilde is obtained as a con extension uh, of Yonida, and Yonida is a hum. So we're sort of expecting to see something like that. Um, but it, of course, it's this particular sheaf hum involving this, uh, this setup as we have it here. Okay, so now um, we're interested in a particular case, and we want to assume that A is a, a, a limit or a sheaf limit of a particular functor. So now we sort of enhance this setup a little bit. We have I um, a functor, or sorry, I a category. and alpha functor, um, and I want this to be uh, valued among sheaves. And then we take A to be the sheaf limit of the alphas. Now we can sort of use what we just did, sort of using, or even maybe even thought, you can think of this as resuming our calculation. What we know is that hum A, we have this guy here, uh, F tilde of A, M, and it, under this further assumption, this is the same thing as hum c hat a of the sheave hum of fm. Just again, taking a look at what we have here, um, we're just basically plugging in. And now, um, what do I need? I want to take the limit out. So I should get this. We have hum c hat, and now this is of course alpha hum fm. But what is this? But lim the hums now in a of f tilde of alpha m, and that's good because in particular, if I put the limit back inside. And I get the forward limit of the F tilde alphas into M. And so what we've done here is just, just comparing this to this is I've shown that the, uh, the map, or maybe I should say even further, is we have an isomorphism from lim F tilde alpha to F tilde of A. And of course, since A is a limit, what that means is that the limit commutes with F tilde. And in particular, this map is an isomorph. Oh, sorry, I'm getting my train of thought all jumbled up. Um, what I've shown is that I have this map. This map is an isomorphism, of course, by the Yonida lemma, because I've done this on the Homs. So it follows that it happens for the objects. Um, and so um, this map is an isomorphism. And in particular, because A is defined as a limit of the alphas, what we've shown is that F tilde commutes with limits as desired. Um, there was uh, one last note in Kashiwara and Shapira about uniqueness. Um, maybe for the sake of time, I leave this. You know, you guys can also, you also have the book presumably, so you guys can check this yourself. Um, I'll just remark that uniqueness is a consequence of cofinality. And then we'll leave it here. I'll put the little box, the black box to represent the black boxed result. Okay, so now um, we want to move towards our characterization. Um, so I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation, um, nothing too crazy, but what we're going to do is consider our functor f c to d, um, two small categories as always, and then we know that h composed with f is of course a functor 
c to d hat. Uh, on the other hand, I can apply h directly to c. So I can um, go into c hat this way, and then I can take the con extension of this triangle to obtain something which I'll call f tilde. Or sorry, I already have an f tilde. Let's call it f hat. I think that's what Kashiwara and Shapira call. Um, so what we know is that when I want to compute, for example, f tilde or f hat of A, and I want to apply this to V, then this is the limit in HOM D of V and F of U. And the limit is, of course, taking over all these guys U to A like always. The previous proposition then tells us that f hat commutes with small inductive limits. And so what we're going to do is denote by, I'm going to put an upper i, c hat to a. This is the full subcategory of, uh, it's a big category, but we don't worry about that. Uh, the full subcategory of the functor category um, consisting of those functors which commute with the small inductive limits. And I'm going to try to make a conscious effort to make that abbreviation. Okay, uh, in light of this, then we have our corollary. And this is sort of what we came here for. So under these conditions, the same conditions as above, then H upper star, the usual pullback, from the category of functors which commute with small inductive limits, I should have written this on the next line. But this is an equivalence of categories. And there's a quasi inverse given by H dagger. And I'm thinking of H dagger as an operator now because I'm applying this. This is a thing that I'm thinking of as acting on functor categories, so I'm not applying any particular functor, I'm thinking of it as something which eats functors and returns other functors. Okay, how do we prove this? Well, after all of this work, it's not so hard. Basically, what you have to do is distill the previous proposition and just sort of think carefully over what it says. So what did we just learn? Well, in the previous proposition, what we saw is that H dagger commutes um, with small inductive limits. Or sorry, lands us in the category. which is what we needed. Um, and in, we also saw that for any G, we have G is isomorphic to H dagger, H star of G, when we invoked that proposition from 2.3 point whatever. Um, that tells us that this H dagger is essentially surjective. So we're actually most of the way to an equivalence already because what we've seen is that um, for fully faithful, I shouldn't say we've seen this, maybe you think we've seen this. We also recognize that this is fully faithful because the co-unit is an isomorphism, and that's established in the exact same proposition. Again, 2.3 point whatever. The co-unit is an isomorphism, and we saw 1.5, that this is the, this buys us fully faithful, and so we have fully faithful and essentially surjective, and so that means that H dagger um, is actually an equivalence of categories by the general nonsense that we've seen in the very beginning. So, in, in a certain sense, we had the tools to understand this result for quite some time, um, because really all we've been doing is talking about the Unita lemma in, in this video. Um, 
the important thing to sort of tie this together was somehow this business of the, the interplay between the Onida lemma, the Onida embedding, and inductive limits. And that's what we did last time. And because we sort of set this up now, we, and we understood this completely thoroughly, we were sort of bound to get some low-hanging fruit, and, and now we have uh, a nice result. And this actually finishes off, us off for chapter two. So we did it. So I'm glad, I'm happy that for all of you guys who have stuck with this and stuck with me in particular, uh, trying to explain to you guys category theory and trying to explain to myself category theory for all this time. Uh, I'm hoping to get uh, several videos out in chapter three in the near future. Um, 3.1 is, I don't know if it's super long per se, but uh, I've been thinking about that for a, a little while now too. Um, and so I'm hoping to get that out to you guys in the very near future. Uh, so I'm excited to keep moving. I hope you guys have been having fun. Uh, and until the next time, uh, just take care.